The bombing sets in motion an international manhunt. While the bomber prepares to strike again. It's before sunrise, December 11th, 1994. While most inhabitants of this city of a million and a half have a few more hours to sleep, 26-year-old Amaldo Forlani gets an early start. Forlani is not his real name. It's the alias he's chosen for today's mission. He's actually from Pakistan, not Italy. He's putting his latest invention through an important test. Everything must go like clockwork. In his line of work, there's no room for error. He is a highly skilled bomb builder. He packs the bomb very carefully. He arrives in plenty of time for his 5 a.m. flight with Philippine Airlines. Before he can board, the bomber must outwit airport security screening procedures. He has designed the components of his bomb to pass undetected by X-ray and metal detection equipment. Or so he hopes. He bought the ticket as Amaldo Forlani. He's a skilled forger, and he has made himself a fake Italian passport with that identity. If his cover is blown, his career as a globetrotting bomber is over. He successfully gets the bomb through airport security and boards his Philippine Airlines flight. The final destination of PAL-434 is Tokyo, but there is a stopover in the Philippine resort town of Cebu, 300 miles to the south of Manila. This is as far as Forlini is flying today. It's 10,000 feet, and weather's still looking clear. Thanks, Dex. Let me get you autopilot. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your Captain Ed Reyes speaking. Welcome aboard Flight 434, flying south from Manila to Cebu and continuing onward to Narita Airport, Tokyo. Flight 434 is under the command of Captain Ed Reyes, a former Air Force pilot who has been flying 747s for Philippine Airlines for nine years. Arrival time is now 5.45. The weather in Cebu is... As usual, the first leg of the flight is fairly empty. Passengers are scattered around the jumbo jet's 400 seats. After takeoff, the bomber is able to move closer to the front. He chooses seat 26K, which on some 747s is directly over the fuel tank. The cabin is tended by stewardess Maria de la Cruz. She flies domestic routes and has worked for Philippine Airlines for one year. Can I get you some juice or coffee? Juice, please. Now the bomber must find a vacant washroom to assemble the explosive device. Arming the bomb only takes minutes, but requires total concentration. The final step is setting the timer so it will explode in four hours' time, long after he leaves the plane.
He hides the bomb in the life jacket pocket underneath his seat. Then he moves forward. When she returns, Maria de la Cruz notices that the roving passenger has moved seats again. Ultimately, he will leave his breakfast untouched and the rest of the flight passes uneventfully. As Philippine Airlines Flight 434 begins its final approach into Cebu, more passengers are getting ready to board the aircraft that will take them onwards to Tokyo. Cabin crew, prepare for landing. Cabin doors to automatic. Dial 434 lands in Cebu at 6.50 a.m and several of the passengers from Manila disembark, including the terrorist with the alias Amaldo Forlani. Bye-bye. Thank you. Maria de la Cruz also leaves Flight 434. A new cabin crew will take over for the four-and-a-half-hour flight to Tokyo. Two hundred and fifty six new passengers board the seven forty seven that arrived from Manila. Many of the passengers are Japanese. Among them is twenty four year old sewing machine engineer Haruki Ikigami. He's looking forward to getting home to Tokyo after his first trip overseas. Airport congestion delays the departure by thirty eight minutes. But the timer on the bomb under seat 26K continues to tick. 8.30 a.m. December 11th, 1994. All 273 passengers for Philippines Airline Flight 434 are now on board for the final leg to Tokyo. No one is aware that two hours earlier, a passenger planted a time bomb under one of their seats. Steward Fernando Bayot is in charge of the forward cabin on this four and a half hour flight. At 8.38 a.m., PAL 434 is cleared for takeoff. On the flight deck, Captain Ed Reyes is assisted by First Officer Jaime Herrera and Systems Engineer Dexter Commendador. Reyes and Commendador are ex Air Force pilots. Haruki Ikigami is seated in 26K, the seat occupied by the bomber on the first leg of Flight 434 from Manila to Cebu. Several passengers are co-workers, traveling with a Japanese tour group, including Keisuke Aoki and Masahiro Moshizuki. After takeoff, everything seemed normal. We were flying at 10,000 meters. I was reading a magazine. Then the meal was served. After eating, I went to sleep. 31-year-old Yukihiko Usui stayed up all night on the last day of his trip, and he's ready to nap after breakfast. He's sitting in row 27, one row behind the seat vacated by the bomber four hours earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. Beautiful day in Tokyo, sunny and 26 degrees. I expect we'll be landing at Narita Airport in two hours time. Two hours into the flight, PAL 434 is cruising on autopilot 10,000 meters above Manami Daitu Island, southern Japan. To ease the pilot's workload, the autopilot remains on throughout the flight, keeping the aircraft on a constant heading and altitude. 